today we're going to build a Kraken. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Giles, and this is Home Theater Fanatics, and today we're building a Kraken. So the Kraken is a 21 inch driver from Dayton Audio. You can find these on Parts Express, and it's one of the new kind of like deep playing home theater drivers in the 21 inch range. Um, and a lot of people are curious how this thing uh, can really perform. So we're gonna build a 21 inch full Marty GSG kit and jam one of these Krakens in there just to see what happens, right? Um, could it be good? Maybe, but we'll find out. Now, this is different than your typical PA driver, so it doesn't use like the spider surround and that kind of stuff, but does it match up to like the Ultimax 18 or some of the other drivers that really have that deep bass sound? And you know, you don't really, or at least I don't find that sound in the 21 inch range. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the build steps, kind of soup to nuts, and show you what it takes to build one of these 21 inch full Marty enclosures from GSG. And let me tell you, this thing is cool. I mean, it looks great. And you know, I'll give you a hint, it sounds pretty good too. But you know, it's a process to build it. There's a lot that goes into it. And if you've never built one before, it's really good to watch this because I'm gonna show you all the different steps from the instructions so you know what it takes and the tools that you need to be successful in the build. This first piece of the build is really the trickiest part. You've got to get these three pieces of wood glued together and there's really nothing for them to hold on to while you're doing it. So as you'll see, I use a fourth piece of the box um, that fits in at the farther end as a brace so that I can clamp all this stuff up. But I don't glue that one in, right? So just uh, be careful not to glue it in. And then also make sure that that piece at the kind of the top of the U there that you see is set correctly. There are two ways that it'll fit in and I'll look closely at the instructions to make sure you've got it right. First off, let's level set on tools. Now, as you watch, you'll be able to see all the tools that I use, but there are a few that are very important that you have to have. And the first one is your glue. I use Titebond 2 in this build. Um, I've used Titebond 3 a lot in other builds, and you can use either one. Titebond 3 is a lot runnier, but it takes longer to set. So it's a bit messier, right? It's harder to deal with. Titebond 2, a little bit faster setting, um, but it's thicker, doesn't run as much. So, you know, it's kind of pick your poison. I've used both. I've been successful with both. And I would say, uh, you know, think about the things that I told you and just pick one and give it a shot. You can't go wrong with either one of them. Now, outside of the glue, you need clamps. You need lots of clamps, tons of clamps, as many clamps as you can get. Um, you know, you could build this with like a brad nailer to help give you support and tack things together. But remember, the glue gives you the strength in the build. You don't use screws, you don't use nails. The brad nails don't do anything other than tack things together. It's all about the glue. And to get the glue to set, you need pressure and you need clamps to give you pressure. Um, you're gonna need 60 inch clamps for this. And I would say if you can, you know, get four 60 inch clamps and then, uh, you know, eight <laughs> or six or at least four uh, 36 inch clamps and then another four like 18 inch clamps, something like that. But uh, you're gonna need about that many to get this thing done. And as you watch the video, you can look at how I clamp down each of these different pieces and see what's going on. Now, there are certain areas of the build where you can have two things going on at the same time. And if you do, you'll need extra clamps to be able to do two things simultaneously. If you don't, 
then you can use uh, fewer clamps if you do everything kind of sequentially. But that'll be up to you. And if you review the video, you'll see which steps you can kind of double up on at the same time. It's not a lot, but it can shave a little bit of time off of the build. Um, I think that a brush is very important to uh, smooth out that glue as you put it down. But beyond that, you know, you're going to need sander and sandpaper when you get down to the end. Um, you know, you can build this thing on a table or on the ground, but just watch the video and you can see all of those different items, but the glue and the clamps, uh, and I can't stress the clamps, super important. You've got to have enough clamps to get this thing done. If you find yourself short of clamps, it's really going to throw kind of a wrench into the works as you build this thing. Out. This is where you have a decision to make. Are you going to use regular speaker wire connectors or are you going to use speak on um, power cables, the, the pro style? If you're gonna use speak on the, the pro stuff, you need to glue this little round circular piece in. If not, you don't need to worry about it. If you can make it to the installation of piece four, then you've overcome a huge hurdle, right? Because those first three pieces are really tough to get together. And once you get this, piece four in, it really adds a lot of stability to the build. Now, this is a foundational piece, so you need to make sure it's in there all the way and that you've got plenty of glue and this thing is tight and that everything is square, right? Because if you mess this one up, everything else is gonna be, well, probably a non-starter for you. So make sure you watch this one closely and get that piece all the way in, seated well and glued in and, uh, and make sure it's strong. This fifth piece forms a part of your port, so it's really important that it seals very nicely against that part number four. So when you put this one in, make sure there's a nice, good, snug fit between four and five, and that you've got plenty of glue between the two to first give it that strength, but also to make sure it's uh, kind of an airtight seal there. You don't really want any gaps in your port. In these next two sections, you're going to install internal bracing. And it's very important that you get this bracing pushed down all the way. If you don't, it'll stick up a little too far and it'll make it really difficult to put the front baffle on. Um, so when you put these in, make sure you get them seated as far down as you can. This front baffle is really the coolest part of the build for me. I really like the way it works uh, and, and fits together. Um, you do have to get these little wooden dowels uh, that you see. If you check out the webpage, it'll give you the specifics. And I'll also uh, have some links down below to uh, the ones that I use that worked well. Um, but uh, this thing's triple layer goodness and it fits together so perfectly. So I just, uh, I really enjoyed putting this piece together. Keep losing sleep while driving in the backseat. What's left of me? At this point in the build, you can really see how this thing is starting to shape up. And this part number 10 gives you that final bottom piece so you can really see how tall it is, how wide it is. And you know, you really only have the back and front left to kind of build to really get the full picture. So getting this one in really completes that picture. Now make sure to pay attention which side those dados go on because you'll want to make sure you don't get this thing backwards because if you do, it's bad. Now these braces never really seem to fit super well for me. It's like they don't, I don't, I don't know. I just, I think I build things a little too cockeyed <laughs> and, uh, and stuff just doesn't seat down, especially uh, that little tiny lip on the, I guess the right side of the screen, as you see this, where, I'm, uh, where I put that glue in, it doesn't seem to seat down against the uh, piece that's coming up from the bottom. But, you know, just take your time, dry fit it, make sure it's there. And, uh, and then as you put that glue on, there's no marker uh, across that piece Piece, the the long piece in the center so just get that straight uh, but don't forget to put glue there because that is very important
let's talk about ports and specifically painting of the ports. So the most difficult thing to paint on the whole box are the ports. So once it's assembled, if you haven't already kind of pre-painted the inside of the ports, it gets really, really difficult to get paint inside all the way down through these ports. So um, in these steps, we're gonna tape this stuff off, watch the instructions, because you don't wanna put paint on areas where you need to have glue bond uh, the wood together. So you, you don't wanna paint that, so you gotta, you gotta tape it off. Uh, but, uh, you know, get some rattle can, uh, black paint, uh, whatever you're using as your finish will go over uh, any of the stuff that you need to cover. So it doesn't matter. This is just really to make sure that you get a nice dark color or whatever color you want inside of the port uh, because it's really difficult to do that once this is fully assembled. This step is one that people find a little bit tricky. I've heard this quite a bit from folks. So when you lay that top front panel, so this isn't the front baffle, this is the piece that the baffle will attach to. People find it actually lifts up in spots and that's because the internal braces didn't get pushed down far enough all the way. So please, as you put this together, if it's not smooth and flush around all of the edges, go ahead and pull that back up and uh, then use a chisel or a sander or something to take those internal pieces down just that half a millimeter or whatever it takes to get that piece to sit flat because when you put that front baffle on if it's not flat and smooth it'll be much more difficult to finish the unit down the line This is where things kind of get exciting for me because you're putting on the back and you know the port will be fully built, um, the box is getting really solid, it looks like what it's gonna look like when it's done. All that's left is the front. Uh, so be careful with this one, make sure you get plenty of glue on it. Um, if you need to, knock down any of the areas that are standing up too far uh, so that you get it nice and flat on the back. Um, and as you look at putting this back piece on, you're going to see if there are any gaps or any weird areas that you'll have to fill so you can kind of understand what that finish section is going to look like as you really want to get that nice smooth finish and if you're going to need to put uh, any filler or not on. One thing you need to do that I didn't have to because things worked out pretty well, but uh, as you're getting ready to put this front baffle on, you need to dry test it, right? So dry fit, and if it lifts up anywhere, this is where you uh, take that orbital sander and just knock down anything that's uh, preventing that baffle from sitting absolutely flat. You want this thing to be as flush as it is, right? You just, you, you, you can't, you can't have any bumps or have this thing lift up anywhere. So this is very important. Use the sander copiously if you need to, to get this part right. feet are my least favorite part of the whole build right um, so it doesn't give you a flat bottom and then you've got these little gaps that I ended up having to put a lot of filler in to, to make things smooth I would much rather have had just a solid piece that you put across the bottom and then you can fill the cracks in or whatever um, to make it smooth so that when you lay this thing on the side um, and I have to lay mine on the side the way my screen works so it so it'll look better so it kind of 
looks a little jacked up with uh, these we weird feet on the bottom. Now, having this is, is nice because you can mount little rubber feet or something to this thicker part. But for me, I would rather just have a full, smooth, flat plate there. Finishing the box really is personal preference, but for me, I take the path of least resistance and use spray-on Duratex. Um, and I even use the cheapest possible tool that you can, which is a hopper gun that I got from Harbor Freight. It was like 20 or 30 bucks. And I use that with that old compressor that I have. Um, it makes applying the, the Duratex really, really easy. Um, just make sure to use everything at the lowest possible setting. So about 20 PSI, uh, set the material uh, dial at, to as little material as possible. You'll still end up spraying up a, a ton of material out of this thing, but it goes on fairly smoothly and it gives you a fairly good uh, finished product if this is the kind of look that you're going for. You don't need to prime or anything, just pull the hopper gun up and go to town. Make sure you practice on a piece of scrap before you get started. For this build, we decided to do something a little special because this one is kind of cool, right? So since the driver is called the Kraken, we decided to give this box a Kraken paint job. This is the first time I've really ever looked at doing any kind of custom paint and well, I suck at that kind of stuff. So I enlisted a local artist, Montira, to do, uh, you know, kind of the tentacles of a Kraken. She's really good. She's got her own channel on YouTube and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And there'll be links down below so you can check out her other stuff. And that's also my wife. So <laughs> it wasn't very difficult for me to uh, talk her into doing it. Well, maybe it was difficult, but uh, she jumped in and uh, has done a great job. So you can kind of see what's going on with this custom uh, paint job now for this we just used regular exterior home paint uh, we got this stuff at home depot and it's just latex uh, and it went right on top of the duratex no problem um, duratex is water soluble so any water-based paint is fine you wouldn't want to use uh, i guess oils or acrylics maybe not um, but uh, but just regular latex seemed to work well and uh, you know i'm recording this voiceover I don't know, a couple of weeks after that, the paint went on and it stuck no problem. We haven't had any issues with it coming off. So if you're looking to do some custom paint job work, uh, you know, house paint should be plenty good for this. Yours, baby, let's talk until we're fine. You've been in bed for days, empty without me. You say, Can't you just magically turn up in mine? Then you know. Now we are at the final, final stretch. So, all that we need to do now is install our speak on connector or whatever you decided to use uh, the cabling for that to the speaker itself and then the driver. So uh, I like to use 10 gauge wire and I will connect that to the speak on connector because I always use speak ons because I think it's a nice secure connection. Um, but I'll feed that through first and then I'll reach around and pull that up through the port so that I can make sure that I have access to that cable because once you bolt in or screw in that speak on connector, uh, and you can't find that cable, life will be a nightmare. So you wanna make sure you don't have that happen to you. But just feed that through uh, four screws of your choice. And I use some Parts Express screws, they're black cap head uh, wood screws that are kind of nice looking to fix that. And you're done with that step. From there, you'll go ahead and connect the wire to your speaker. In the case of this speaker, it's a single voice coil. So red goes to red, black goes to black, and you're done. So that part is super, super simple. And then it's time to take your, I think it's eight screws and mount the driver. Um, you know, I recommend using some zip ties so that you can place the driver in, uh, put a zip tie on either side, and then you can move the driver around a little bit and make sure that it's nice and centered and, uh, you know, kind of uh, twisted the right direction so that it's straight up and down and not crooked uh, with uh, the ways that the screws are aligned. 
Um, and uh, if you don't use zip ties and you drop this thing in, it's super painful. Also, don't forget, you're gonna need a lot of gasket on this. So uh, I actually installed this driver and fired everything up and discovered that I had some air leakage uh, because I didn't uh, really handle the gasket well. So make sure you got plenty of gasket action. Go. You can use weather stripping or dedicated speaker gasket. Um, it'll all work okay, but it's super important because there is no gasket on the Kraken uh, built in from the factory. And as far as uh, screw choice goes, uh, you know, people like to use T-nuts or big long wood screws or <laughs> slag bolts or, uh, you know, there, there's lots of different ways that you can go about it. But this is a heavy driver um, and uh, it will put a lot of force out when you really get it going. So I'll have links down below to the screws that I used. Um, but, uh, you know, use your best judgment. And, uh, you know, if you're concerned, make sure to reach out to GSG and uh, clear that screw selection with them. You won't let me go So that's it folks. That's what it takes to build a 21 inch full Marty GSG kit with the Kraken. Um, now, how does it sound? Well, I'm not going to tell you in this video. Well, it sounds good. I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome. But in our next video in the Kraken series, I'm really going to get down and measure this and let you know how this thing performs in the room. And I'll give you my thoughts of the Kraken versus the Devastator. And those are kind of the, you know, two big things that GSG's got going on in the 21 inch form factor. And a lot of people are kind of torn between do I do the the full Marty where I can see the driver. Do I do the Devastator or I can take advantage of, you know, kind of the cool box design, but it's like just a big cube and you can't see any of the driver action. Um, so, you know, there's a lot to think about as you select what you want to go with in your room. And we'll talk about that in the next video um, and see how this thing performs because, you know, not only do you have to pick your box, but you got to pick your driver and there are lots of choices out there. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Um, you know, if you find value, please like and subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be notified. And also, I've got a Patreon. I would love it to, uh, you know, have a lot of folks join up there and <laughs> support the channel, obviously. And we've also got a brand new Discord server. And if you've not joined up there, that is a way that you can really talk and ask questions and get responses uh, interactively and a lot more quickly than you can on Facebook. Uh, Discord's really, really cool. And if you've not tried it out yet, you know, hop over, follow the link, uh, create an account. And as we build to that fusion point, you know, eventually we'll have people on hopefully 24 by seven as the world spins talking about GSG uh, subwoofers and the drivers and bills and that kind of stuff. So it'll be fun to, to build that community. And uh, I would love to have you join up there. Uh, so thanks again for watching. Um, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.